Hey, welcome back to another episode of Tea Time with Tangi. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I do appreciate all of the support. I ask that you like, share, and subscribe to this channel just so that you can stay updated on when I post new videos. And I hope that you grabbed your favorite cup of tea. Um, today I am drinking on mango ginger. It is probably not my favorite tea, but it's caffeine free and it's organic. And so, um, yeah, that's the tea that I'm drinking on. If you have a favorite tea or you could suggest any good teas for me to drink because I love tea, um, please drop that down below in the comments. And um, before I get into today's legal tea, <laughs> I want to give go ahead and give out this disclaimer that I always give out, which is um, the contents in this video are general information. Nothing is um, given as legal advice. Uh, there's no attorney-client relationship formed. And again, I am just providing you with general information. So please take note of that. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into today's tea of the day, which is three tips on how to avoid estate planning nightmares. Now, I said this is going to be personal, so I am going to be sharing a personal nightmare that happened in my own family when my grandmother um, passed away many, many years ago. Okay, so this was probably like in 2003. So this was a long time ago, but this is one of the reasons what made me interested in um, estate planning. Um, it's something that I studied in law school. Um, I definitely um, really a big advocate of making sure that not only do you have proper estate planning in place, but that interested parties and beneficiaries also know some of their um, rights and maybe things that they can do to, you know, stay, stay clear of um, estate planning nightmares, okay? So, Let's go ahead and get into uh, topic number one. Okay, so I said topic number one, but I meant tip number one. <laughs> All right, so tip number one is just basically you want to make sure that you keep your will stored in a safe place, that you notify your executor, which is just another fancy name for a personal representative. Um, that's the person who's going to be overseeing your estate when your time comes to leave this earth. Um, and so, but that individual, you want to let them know where you've actually kept your will stored. Now, um, you know, keeping your will stored in a particular place is definitely a personal decision that you each have to make, um, when you're doing estate planning. So there are some options. Uh, one of those options is that you can keep your will, uh, stored in, um, your home. Um, and that is, um, you could put it in like a drawer or a safe deposit box. You want to definitely just make sure that it's somewhere safe, that where it doesn't get damaged, that it doesn't get, you know, destroyed or even stolen or taken. Um, and then you also can leave your will with the attorney. So if you've had an attorney who drafted your will, you can leave that will with the attorney. Um, and then you can also, um, depending on the state, I don't know, every state's different. In Maryland, you can register your will um, with the Register of Wills office. Um, there's a fee for that. I think it's like $5. You take your original will down there. Um, you put all your information in. It's in a sealed envelope. You put your information on that envelope. You pay the fee, and then they hold on to that will for you. And if you need to access it, you're able to do so. Like if you need to do a modification of your will, you can access that will, and you can, um, you know, get, you know, and then even if you have a personal representative, so like when, if you pass away and that person needs, your personal representative needs to get that will, they just have to have written uh, consent that they're able to get the will. So <clears throat> those are some, some options of where you can leave your will um, stored. 
in the event that you have a will drafted. Now, on the personal side of it, I'm going to tell you the story a little bit of what happened with my grandmother's will. Um, she initially had her first will, which I had um, read it and seen. She showed it to me. Um, I was, um, my mother and I were executors over the will. And um, I think my mother was like the main executor. And then I was, in case something happened with my mom, I was the fallback executor with the personal representative. And then I was a beneficiary over some stuff in her will, right? So that was her first will. She showed it to me and she showed me where she kept it. It was in her room and, you know, in a folder and put up in, in a drawer. And that was her first will. Fast forward to, and that was when I was much, I think I was like, I don't know, a a teen going into my adulthood when she showed me that will. Um, fast forward to 2002, um, or actually say 2003, that will, the first will she had was missing, was gone. And a second will was drafted two, about two months before she passed away. So a family member, two family members, took my grandmother to have her will modified two months or so before she passed away and all of the everything in her will was changed. That will was actually stored with the attorney, not the same attorney who drafted her first will, but with a different attorney who drafted her her, her second will. That will was stored with the attorney um in, with the attorney's office. And to this day, I actually called them yesterday to this day, that will, mind you, this was in 2003, it is 2023, that will is still in a safety box area in the law firm, um, untouched, and she's passed away in 2003. So, you get where I'm going with this story. So, tip number one, make sure that you store your will in a safe place and that you notify your executor. Um, or your personal representative, if that's what you want to call them, um, where that will is stored. And make sure it's in a safe place. Okay, so moving along to tip number two, um, which basically is just uh, talking about more so for interested parties. I think this is a good tip for interested parties. These are people who um, are probably going to inherit something from the will. <clears throat> So, or be responsible to the estate, like an executor or, or a personal representative. Um, but tip number two is to distribute the assets um, that are designated to the beneficiaries in the will, um, especially if those assets are solely in the name of the decedent, then you want to make sure that a probate petition is filed with the court. Okay, so basically pro, uh, probate... Um, it's not something that's automatic. It doesn't just happen by itself. Somebody has to actually file a petition with the court um, in order to make sure that the estate is properly handled and things are um, passed down how they're supposed to be passed down. So, uh, you know, if in the will, a personal representative is appointed, so that individual is going to be the one that administers um, the estate and the court is going to make sure that that individual is um, doing an inventory, an accounting, um, and then the court's going to make a final um, distribution at some point of the assets um, of the decedent. I told you I didn't like that tea very much, so got my backup water. <laughs> I've been having some allergy issues here. So, anyways. Um, as I was saying, uh, once that person, um, you know, is, is, you know, handling the estate um, <clears throat> and making sure that, you know, the beneficiaries get what they're supposed to get, then that is kind of, you know, the benefit of having a will, right? Well, what happens if probate never happens, um, which is what happened in my grandmother's case? 
Um, so, you know, if you want to inherit property uh, from the estate, then again, you have to file a probate. Um, you cannot legally transfer property or assets that are currently in the decedent's name um, if you don't take any action. So if you have a house in your will and it's supposed to go to somebody and your name is on that will and you pass away and nobody ever probates it, guess what happens to that house? Well, we'll find out when I tell you about the story. Um, lawsuits can be brought by beneficiaries against the responsible party um, if they don't, you know, probate the estate. Um, and then also there are issues that can remain unresolved, which I'll talk about in tip number three. Um, those are issues with validity of, validity of the will, um, such as, you know, uh, fraud, undue influence type of issues, um, competency issues. So the, the person lacks capacity to even enter into a will and, um, the validity of signatures on the will, all of those things can come into play and be questioned during probate. But if probate is never initiated, then guess what? Those issues go unresolved. And so that's kind of what happened with my grandmother's case. Um, she had, like I said, in tip number one, she had a will. That will was never um, the first will. No one knows where that will is. I looked for it. My mom looked for it. We couldn't find it. Second will that was done two months after, right before she passed away, two of my relatives took my grandmother to an attorney, had her will uh, redone completely, <laughs> everything totally different than what was in the first will, because I have a copy of that will. Um, and um, <clears throat> to this day, that will is still with the attorney's office in a safe safety box or whatever at the attorney's office never been probated and uh what happened is that there was um uh, my grandmother owned vehicles she had a house um that was already paid off her house was paid off all that needed to be paid on was property taxes and um there was land in there that was supposed to be given to like i guess each one of her children was supposed to get portions of land that she had places she had some bank accounts and all kinds of other stuff in her will but <clears throat> my main focus right now we'll talk about is like the house right um because that was one of the um assets that I was supposed to inherit <laughs> with a cousin of mine it never did happen it was given to it was in the second what was put to an eight-year-old and a 17-year-old and the individual who never filed, who was the executor in this will, didn't probate my grandmother's will. And so what had happened is, is that that house never got transferred to anybody. It just stayed in my grandmother's name and nobody paid the property taxes on it. And that house ended up getting taken by the state. So my grandmother's home, which I grew up in and... She did so much stuff. She built like a shed in the backyard. I mean, she, my grandmother had like a barbecue pit that she built. Her like my grandmother was. She was a good man. She was. <laughs> she was a builder, and all of that stuff gone, taken, taken away, because the will was never probated. And I, being you know the twenty three year old that I was then, I had no idea about any of this stuff. I wasn't really heavily in any legal, wasn't in law. I didn't go to law school until like 2012. So I didn't know anything about any of this stuff. And her will, all the great estate planning that she did, it was done in vain. It was done for nothing. And the second will, which I'm going to talk about in tip number three, that will yeah, that will was definitely had issues. In one in one part of her will, there was a no contest clause that said if anybody contested this will, they would get a dollar. So then that made my mother, you know, not want to it, do anything or say anything about the will. But again, the will never was probated. So there was, you know, and I think then I didn't know that like an interested party can, um, an interested party can file, you know, for probate. Like if this individual who was supposed to file for probate for my grandmother, because that person did not 
And I'm trying to not throw any of my family members under the bus by saying any names or anything like that. So, um, cause I am keeping, I, this is personal, but I don't want, I am still trying to have a little bit of, you know, um, tact about what I'm saying here. So because this individual did not file the probate, um, everything that my grandmother had was gone. The cars, the house. I don't know if my mo- I don't even know if my mother got the land or not. I can't really remember, but a whole bunch, you know, like nothing was done the way that it was supposed to have been done. And that second will, I believe, never got probated because of issues with, you know, lack of capacity, fraud type of stuff. You know, my grandmother was sick and dying of cancer, and she was like on heavily um, uh, medicated. And I remember. When I found out that the will had got changed, I remember going to talk to her in her room and asked her, I looked at her and I said, Granny, do you know that you 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 modified your will, you changed your will? And she looked at me and she said, No, I didn't do that. I don't I don't know. I don't know. I didn't do that. And I just was like, you know what? This is crazy. So that goes back to making sure your will is stored in a safe place. So that, you know, someone has access to be able to find it, but I couldn't find that will because it was gone, the first one. The second one, yeah, that one's called into question. So so to, so basically, what I, I say all that to say, probate your will. And if the person who is overseeing the will, or I mean, not overseeing, but the person that is supposed to be overseeing the estate, the, the um, executor, the personal representative, that person's supposed to file for probate. They don't file for probate. If you're an interested party, then you might need to take the initiative to go file for a pro for probate um, if that's allowed in your state, okay? Or go talk to an attorney. Definitely, that'd probably be the best thing for you to do is to talk to an attorney um, to find out what you need to do to get probate started if the person that's supposed to be doing the probate Uh, petition does not do it. All right. And that's tip number two. All right. So we're moving on to tip number three, which is our last tip of the day. Um, If you are an interested person and you believe a will or a codicil, which is just a modified will, is invalid because of lack of testamentary capacity or undue influence or fraud or forgery or maybe there's a presence of a newer superseding will, or you just object to the appointment of the proposed executor, um, then you um, can file an objection objection to a probate petition. So let's say that, you know, like I said, in, ste- in, in tip number two, you need a probate, but let's say, and, and I said, you know, I told you about the story that my family did not probate my grandmother's will, um, but in... Um, step number three, let's say that this will did get probated, right? So let's say my grandmother's will got probated. Well, you know, m- me being an, I, I feel like I would have been an interested person because my, the initial will, you know, uh, and my mom too, my mom could have actually even, she would have been probably even a better person to, um, to have something to say just because she was actually a, listed as a beneficiary in in the will i was i was removed i was taken out of everything so um and you know i think that no contest clause that was in my grandmother's will actually prevented my mom one for and myself i mean again i was a lot younger but my mom me and my mom talked a lot about this stuff um but i know my mom you know she was she didn't know any of her rights either um so she didn't and when we read the no contest clause and my mom didn't want to like say anything because she figured she wasn't going to get anything anyways. But again, the will never got probated, but let's say it had got probated. My mom could have raised some objections with my grandmother's will. Um, and so the no contest clause piece, um, you know, some people choose to put in a provision, um, in their will that has this no contest clause. Um, it kind of discourages interested uh, parties from challenging the terms of the will, which I believe was a, a factor in why this individual uh, family member decided to put that clause in there to kind of 
discourage myself and my mom from, you know, saying anything, right? So we were just like, I mean, what can we do at this point, right? Just let it be. Um, but then, you know, um, not all the time, these no contest clause, they, they hold up. They don't always hold up in court, right? So let's say that, you know, uh, my grandmother's will went to probate. Um, I would have definitely objected or my mom would have objected to the capacity, her, to the lack of capacity to enter into this second will. My grandmother was dying. She was so sick and so frail. When I look at her signature on that will, that wasn't even her signature. Her signature, her signature, you could tell she was sick. And two months later, and mind you, she was on all kinds of medications, on morphine and everything. There's no way my grandmother knew what she was doing when she signed that second will, which is probably one of the reasons why the will was never probated. Okay, it was it wasn't probated because I think the family member knew that if it got probated, somebody was probably going to call into question the validity of this will. Um, and it was just a it was just a way to, you know, silence people, including myself, because I had no idea about any of this stuff. I wish I had a video like I have right that I'm making right now that I could have looked at. Because I don't even know if YouTube was a big deal back then or whatever. Um, but I wish I could have looked and found or talked to someone to find out what our rights were. To know what we have, what we can do if we feel that a will is is not is not valid. Um, and so <clears throat> I, you know, I I, I find that. A lot of times people do these kinds of things um, because they want to gain things. They want to gain property and they do all these weird, you know, fraudulent type of things. Um, but, you know, if you have a family member who has and you're a beneficiary in a will and that will has... Um, property in it and things that have been changed and altered or things that you find are not that's not what your loved one would have wanted then you do have the right to file an objection to the probate uh petition um and like let's say i mean i i like to think that if i could have found her first will which i can't say for certain who took it but I'm pretty, pretty much sure that someone took the will and got rid of it and then went and created the second will on her deathbed. Um, I feel like if I had the, if my grandmother would have given me a copy of the will, which is another thing about tip one, like you should probably, ha you might want to give your um, personal representative a copy of that will. Um, so like if I had had a copy of that will and then I had a copy of the second will and let's say the individual in my family went and filed for probate. I could have taken that first will and the second will and went to the court and said, something's not right. Okay. Something obviously is not right. My grandmother had a will for all of these years that had sound decisions in it. She wasn't leaving her house to an 8 and a 17 year old. She wasn't changing her life insurance policies from my mother to a 17 year old, right? Like, and these were grandchildren. These were her grand, the, 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 the stuff that had been changed in the will were to grandkids, not even her own kids. Like her house wasn't left to any of her adult children. It was left to two young minor grandchildren, which was crazy and ridiculous, um, an eight year old really for a house. Um, so the, the lack of, you know, capacity to enter into a will would have definitely been something I could have objected to had I known that I had the right to object to that. But one, I didn't even have the original will because it was missing in action. Two, there was a no contest clause in the will, which led me and my mom to think God like, 
we couldn't even go and file some like one we didn't know that we could even go file a petition to probate right um <clears throat> and but if there had been a petition filed like I don't think myself or my mom would have went and objected because my mom would have been in fear that she's not going to get anything in the will right because we didn't know any better but I say all of this to say like with these tips these things can create sorry that's my alarm to go pick my kid up a little bit <laughs> oh my goodness um these things can um god what was i saying <laughs> cool live tv eh? um and i am not recording this over so um i say all that to say that you know with the three tips you know tip number one making sure your will is in a safe place so that people with ulterior motives that are looking to do evil things can't steal your will and get rid of it um and then go and have a fake another not I shouldn't say fake because it was a real will but it was not valid um can't have another will drafted two months when you're about to die when you've had a will for all these other years um so keep it safe to probate the will like and if someone doesn't probate it then you go and find an attorney and talk to an attorney to find out how you can get that will probated um in in court uh so that you can address the the legal issues um if there are any in that will or or I should say validity issues that are in the will or if you are a beneficiary and that person isn't probating the will so that you can get the things that you're supposed to get. Because I don't think things were properly handled. Like when it came to the land and all of that stuff, me and my mom were trying to find where her land was. We were trying to do all these um, government searches and all of this stuff, which I I think could have been eliminated if everything had went to probate. Because then the court would have made sure that the executor, which was the family member, would have been making sure that everything was accounted for and that an inventory was done, which none of that happened. And then, you know, like the third tip, just making sure that you um, are, you know, if you're an interested party, that you file an objection to something that is probated. Once it, once you get the, the will into probate, then you have the right to object to stuff. Now, filing an objection, I don't think is very easy. So that... It, I recommend, you know, seeking legal advice on a lot of this stuff, but these are just some of the nightmares of things that happen when people just do crazy, god-awful things in the sake of greed and money and, you know, houses are lost, like family houses, like houses that have been in the in the family for decades down the drain just gone um you know cars repossessed uh land lost whatever you know like all of these things can be prevented if proper you know like I can't say my grandmother didn't do proper planning because she did do proper planning I think that the one thing she probably could have done was maybe give me a copy of the first will um and not just tell me where it was um, and that also taught me some things, you know, to like help with, you know, clients in the future, like w what to tell them and suggest to them about where to keep their will. Um, and I didn't even remember the attorney. I mean, it's been a long time, 2003. So it's so long. But I mean, like I said, her will still in the office of the other attorney uh never got probated which is just baffling to me uh but nevertheless those are the three tips those are the nightmares that some families experience but i hope these tips are helpful so if you are a individual wanting to draft a will or you know do estate planning make sure that you're telling people where you're putting your stuff and um, keeping it in a safe place and if you're an interested party a beneficiary um, or someone who's supposed to have gotten something or even just, I don't know, you're just, you're just the interested party. Definitely know that you have the right to, um, try to get that, that will probate it. 
um, by maybe reaching out to an attorney to find out how you can, especially if you're supposed to inherit something and no one's doing anything. They're not taking action on filing the, pro the probate petition. Um, or if they do file the probate petition and you believe that things were done fraudulently, like in my grandmother's case, then you would definitely want to seek legal representation. So I said a mouthful. I hope these three tips are helpful. Um, if you have any questions or, you know, comments or anything, please drop the comments down below. Um, and thanks for tuning in. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys two weeks from now. I am definitely probably going to go on to a different topic, um, maybe some immigration stuff. Again, I'm an immigration, family law, estate planning attorney, uh, primarily immigration. And so um, if you have any, um, any questions or comments or whatever, feel free to reach out in the comments uh, below. And happy... Black History Month? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, bye.